Hey everyone, my name's Trevor, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a gradient sky background for a 2D game in Unity. I'll cover creating the background using a two color gradient, as well as expanding it to a three color gradient. I'll be using Unity 2D with the Universal Render Pipeline, and we'll be creating the gradient with something called Shader Graph. If you don't know what Shader Graph is or haven't used it before, don't worry too much. It comes with the Universal Render Pipeline, and I'm intending for this video to be beginner friendly for those who haven't worked with Shader Graph before. And one last thing before we get started, if you're simply looking for the end result to plug into your own project, you can find this sample project on GitHub. I have two branches, one for the two color gradient shader and another for the three color gradient shader. And of course, I'll put the link to this project in the description for this video. With all of that said, let's get started. From the Unity Hub, I'm going to create a new project. I'll make it 2D and call it Gradient Sky Background. Once the project loads, we need to install something called the Universal Render Pipeline, or commonly abbreviated as URP. I'm not going to go into great detail about the Universal Render Pipeline in this video, but it's basically a more optimized render engine made by Unity. It also comes with some features like Shader Graph that we'll be using in this tutorial. To install it, go to Window, Package Manager, select Unity Registry from this dropdown, and then type in Universal into the search bar. Select Universal RP on the left and then click Install to install it. As you can see, for this video I'll be using version 10.5.1, which at the time of making this video is the latest version. Next, we need to configure our project to actually use the Universal Render Pipeline. In the project files, I'm going to right click, create, and then create a new folder. I'll call it URP. Then inside of that folder, I'll right click, create, rendering, universal render pipeline, and then pipeline asset. That'll create a pipeline asset file and a default renderer to use. For this tutorial, since we'll be working in 2D, we'll actually want to use a different renderer than the default one. So you can delete the file called Universal Render Pipeline Asset Renderer. Then right click, Create, Rendering, Universal Render Pipeline, and then 2D Renderer. I'll rename this to 2D Renderer. Then click on the other file, which is the Pipeline Asset file, and then drag the 2D Renderer into the Renderer List default slot. Last, go to Edit, project settings, then click on graphics, and then for the top slot you can just select the Universal Render Pipeline asset that we just created. Now that the Universal Render Pipeline is all set up, we can start working on our gradient shader. In the assets directory of the project, I'll create a new folder and I'll call it shaders. Inside that folder, I'll right click, create, shader, Universal Render Pipeline, and then sprite unlit shader graph. You can use the sprite lit shader graph instead if you want to, but I'm going to use the unlit one. I'll call this file gradient sky background shader. Then I can double click it to open it up in the shader graph editor. I'll maximize the editor and move things around a bit so we can see everything a bit more clearly. Real quick, I want to give an overview of what we're looking at. This window on the top left is called the blackboard. We can use it to define properties, or variables, for the shader graph. So for example, I'll create a color and then drag it out into the editor. Any block inside the editor, like the property we just dragged in, is called a node. When clicked on the color node, configuration for that node is going to show up in the window called the graph inspector. I can use the graph inspector to change things about the node. So in this case, the property's color value. Then if I click the small circle on that node and drag it to the base color of our fragment, you'll notice the main preview window changes. The main preview window shows us a preview of our shader, which in this case is just the color red. If you want to enable or disable any of these windows, you can do so by using these toggles in the upper right. And of course, you can delete things by right clicking them and selecting delete, or just by selecting them and then pressing the delete button. The last thing I'll mention is that if you're using a newer or older version of the Universal Render Pipeline, the vertex and fragment you see here might look just a bit different. As long as you have a base color section in the fragment, you should be fine for this tutorial. Let's start building the two color gradient shader. First, we're going to create a new node. 
Press the space bar to get the create node window to pop up. Then in the search bar, type position and click on position to create the node. Then change this space drop down to object. We'll do the same thing to create another node, but this time the node we want to create is called split. Then we can drag the output of the position node into the input of the split node. Then we're gonna create another node called subtract. Notice that if we drag the R value into the subtract node's A input, and then change the B value to zero, we get a split along the X axis where the split origin is close to the middle. For the output of the split node, you can think of the R value as the X axis, G as the Y axis, and of course B as the Z axis. Since we're going for a sky-like gradient, we actually want to use the G output to get the Y axis out of the position node. For the subtract node's B input, we're going to create a new property. Using the blackboard window, we'll create a new property of type float and call it origin. From there, we can drag the property into the editor and hook it up to the B input. While clicked on the origin parameter, we can change its value in the graph inspector. Notice that as we go above zero, the origin is further up, and if we go below zero, the origin is further towards the bottom. I'll set this to negative 0.4 for now, but just know that because we used a property for this, we'll actually be able to fine tune this later in the Unity Inspector. Next, we'll create another new node. This one's called Divide. Then we can drag our subtracts output into the Divide's A input. Notice that when we change the B input, it spreads out the bottom color further into the top, the larger that number is. Let's create a new property for this of type float, and we'll call it spread. And of course, drag it into the editor and hook it up to the B input of the divide node. For now, I'm just going to initialize this as 0.4. Things are starting to get a bit cluttered, so I'm going to press Control, click and hold, select all of the nodes we've created, and then move them back a bit. Next, we're gonna create a new node called clamp, which will clamp the output of the divide node between two values. So just drag the output of the divide node into the input of the clamp node, and we can leave the min and max values at zero and one. We need this clamp node because of the next node we're about to create, which requires an input between zero and one. I'm going to select and move everything back just a bit more, and then I'm going to create another new node called lerp. Next, you can drag the output of the clamp node into the T input of the lerp node. Then we need to create two new properties for the top and bottom colors. Using the blackboard window, these will be of type color, and I'll call them top color and bottom color. I'll then drag them both out into the editor and then hook them up to the lerp node. The top color will go into the B input and the bottom color will go into the A input. Then, using the graph inspector, you can change the top and bottom colors of the gradient. Finally, you can drag the output of the lerp node into the base color section of the fragment. Make sure you hit the Save Asset button in the top left, and then you can minimize the shader graph editor. Now, we'll actually use the shader we just created in our 2D scene. Right click on the shader graph file, create, and then material. I'll call this file gradient sky background material. Next, we need something to apply the material to. In a sprite, I created this simple 16 by 16 white tile that we can use as the background. Just for organizational purposes in the assets directory, I'm going to create a new folder and call it art. Then I'll drag the PNG of that white tile into the project. If you click on it, some values will show up in the inspector on the right. I'm going to set the pixels per unit to 16 since the tile is 16 by 16. Filter mode should be point no filter and compression should be none. Click apply to save the changes. Now that we have something to use as a background sprite, we can drag that into the scene. Right away, you'll notice that it shows up as black. This is because we're using the universal render pipeline, but we don't have any lights in our scene. In the scene hierarchy, right click, light, 2D, and select global light 2D. 
Now the sprite should be showing up as the correct color. Next, I'm going to rename the sprite object in the hierarchy to background sprite, and then change the size to closely match the size of the camera. A width of 19 and a height of 10 seem to be pretty close in my case. Now, while clicked on the background sprite in the scene hierarchy, drag the shader material we created into the inspector. Just like that, you should see the gradient fill up in the background. If you expand the material, you'll see the properties that we created. You can safely play around with these and they'll be separate from the default values in the actual shader graph. Something that you may have noticed is that we're getting a warning. Material does not have a main text texture property, it is required for Sprite Renderer. To my knowledge, this isn't really hurting anything, but if you're like me and you don't want to stockpile warnings, it does have a pretty easy fix, so let's take a look at that. I jumped back into the Shader Graph Editor. Using the blackboard, we're going to create a new property of type Texture2D and just leave the name as Texture2D. Select it, and then in the Graph Inspector, change the reference to underscore main text. Make sure you match this exactly as it is case sensitive. After that, make sure you save by clicking Save Asset, and then you can minimize the Shader Graph Editor. And just like that, the warning should be gone. That's it for the two color gradient shader. Now let's expand this to use three colors instead of two. Back in the Shader Graph Editor, I'm going to select everything from the Position node to the Clamp node, and use Ctrl D to duplicate them. I'll put the duplicated nodes right above the original ones. Then, just to make a little bit more space, I'm going to drag the Lerp node and this other stuff a bit to the right. We're going to redo the properties a bit, so I'm going to delete the Origin and Spread properties from all of the inputs. I'll rename the origin property to top origin and then drag it out and plug it into the input for the original subtract node. For now, I'll initialize this value to 0.1. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for spread. I'll rename spread to top spread and plug it in as the input for the original divide node. I'll initialize it as 0.3. As you might have guessed, I'm going to do the same thing for the duplicated nodes, but these will represent the bottom parts of the gradient. I'll create a bottom origin float property and then plug that into the duplicated subtract node and then initialize it with a value of negative 0.6. And then I'll create a float property called bottom spread and plug that into the duplicated divide node and then initialize that with a value of 0.3. Next, I'm going to create another new property of type color for the middle color, and then I'll drag that out into the editor. I'll keep top color where it's at, but I'm going to delete the link for the bottom color. And then next, I'll create a second lerp node. I'm going to plug in the bottom color into input A, the middle color into input B, and the duplicated clamp node into the T input. Then I'll change the middle color using the graph inspector. Next, I'll drag the output of the new lerp node into the A input of our original lerp node. And that's that. It's a bit hard to see when the middle and top colors are the same, so I'll change the middle color again so that way we can see it a bit better. And as usual, make sure you save the asset once you're done editing. Finally, we have a three color gradient sky background. Definitely take some time to play around with the values and customize this for your own needs. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you got something out of this video, give it a thumbs up so more people see it. I plan on creating more videos within the 2D game development and the indie game development spaces, so if you like that kind of stuff, uh, feel free to subscribe. But most of all, I hope you found this helpful in some way. Thanks again, and have a great day!